Okay guys, Saturday morning, so last night you saw me do bits and pieces to this bike. There's definitely a couple more bits I want to do, um, but at this stage I want to get it MOT'd. The two bits I want to do are, I want to get into here, just check, make sure it's not split. I want to run a new airline down to the, the, the fuel pump. And I want to change this last bit of fuel line to the thicker black one as well. So we've got kind of the same size fuel um, lines throughout. So that's it. But saying that, I'm going to be throwing on my GoPro. And my aim is going to be to ride this bike to MOT now and see if it passes. I see no reason why it wouldn't at this stage. Um, it runs and rides well, it brakes well, all the lights work, the horn works. So I think I might be okay on this one. This strap on the back here is to hold the seat down. If any of you have popped seats on your mopeds and you think, oh man, I can't get this MOT'd, you just have to strap it down. It doesn't have to be locked. Um, now I'm only doing that until I do the Felcro fix. My aim is going to be to do a Felcro fix. Um, and it's just going to be two little bits, two little bits of Felco under here, and you just, you just kind of rip it up. Other than that, I expect this bike to run and ride very well and get me to the MOT test centre, and I expect it to pass. So, wish me and the bike luck. So, as you can see from that test run, the bike, uh, very good on the top end, very good on the idle jet. It didn't like quarter throttle, half throttle-ish. Um, that gives me two options. The bike now is riding like the original DNA road, which is pretty crap, if we're being honest. I've got two options here. Now, I think there's too much of a gap distance between the pilot jet and the main needle so you've got two ways to uh, to sort that out up the pilot jet which I think I'll do because I've got the original in there somewhere so I can chuck the original in or I can um, lift the needle the main needle and what that does is it basically becomes a it gets rid of the middle area, gets rid of the middle ground. So, um, yeah, but of course, no point doing any of that until I've worked out if there's an air leak in there, which there, there, there appears to be. So, air leak sorted, find out the original pilot jet size, check what my pilot jet size is, swap them over, that bike should be beautiful. Fingers crossed it passes. Okay guys, so we're back, we've got an MOT, that's a huge result. Um, now, what you may or may not have noticed in that video is that the idle 
and the tiniest touch of throttle was great. Full throttle was amazing. First third to half, not so good. And that's the pilot. Now, I've pulled the carb off in case I'm changing the pilot, but we can't really meter that until I've checked the air suction tube and the intake manifold to see that it's not split. Now, Galera, as well as um, Piaggio's, the intake manifold split regularly. It's a right pain, um, but it is something that happens. Now, I fix them with, uh, what do you call it, a silicone sealant, high temp, oil resistant, fuel resistant, etc. So, um, you know, I do fix them, but it is a pain and it's a common thing. New one of these costs 20 quid, but you've got to wait a few days for it to turn up. So um, that's where we're at. Also, this pipe here, this is the suction pipe. I believe this goes to the um, fuel pump. I believe it only goes to the fuel pump, but something in my head tells me that there might be a junction box somewhere. So I'm going to pop the other end off and see if I can pull it through and see what we get. So at the moment, I'm popping this off. Now I can see a little split there, look. In fact, there you go, step one, find split. Okay, can see a little split there. Good, I'll get that fixed. Um, let's see what else we find. Let's get that fixed. And um, let me check the original carb, which is here somewhere, to make sure the pilot jets match up. I bet they're off by two or four. The idea would be to put the other one into there, and then this bike should just be running beautifully. So, a couple of bits to do there, guys. So, guys, um, here we go. If you look in there, fairly big slit. Um, definitely going all the way through. So that would have been the source of the air leak. Just check all around these. They're common for splitting at the bottom. Uh, I'm going to seal and plumbers tape that. I've done that before and they've lasted longer than the originals. Um, so seal and plumbers tape on that. So you put the sealant in, rub it on the inside smooth, let that sit and cure a couple of hours. Then you plumber's tape, which is a stretchy, it looks exactly the same as, as um, electrical tape. And to be fair, electrical tape would work anyway. Um, so stretch it around and you'll have a long-term fix there. These are kind of 15 to 20 quid, you could order them. Uh, but the guy interested in the bike would be coming to look tomorrow. And if I'm being honest... Um, like I said, these are known for splitting. The repairs I've done in the past have outlived the um, originals. So um, I'm going to repair this one for now. Right, so next bit I need to do is I need to get this, this suction wire here. I think I'm going to have to strip down the bike again. Because I want to check that suction wire system, make sure it's properly working. Um, so I think I'm going to strip the bike, it doesn't take long. In fact, what I'll do is I'll take the, the side panels off and the seat panel and the top panel. And um, I'll get right down to that, check them pipes properly, seal them up forever so that we know exactly where we're going. And it's all been done. And all of that, while well, this is going to be sitting, curing, ready to be put back on. Um, they don't have a any seal between the heads. And here, it is actually just this rubber here that does it. You just bolt it down strong enough to make sure that it's not got any gaps. Interesting that. If you're worried, you can put the same sealant on a little bit. I might put a little bit on. But at this stage, I'm not worried. Let's get this sealed up first. That would have been the source of our extra leak. So if you imagine the carb was in there, and it was kind of open a little bit, you've got that much extra air, which is a lot, going straight into the engine. Um... That's what the uh, slightly dodgy running issue would have been. It's good that we found it. So here's the suction system I've just pulled out. Now I think I know what it does. I think one goes to the actual suction of the fuel um, tap at the top. So that is top suction fed to start with. And then the second one controls the actual fuel pump. So one sucks fuel down into the fuel pump. That sucks the fuel pump around. Third one comes up and onto the uh, the manifold there, which is currently being glued 
and city. Um, so I'm going to recreate this um, a little bit better. I'm going to extend the lines a little bit and I'm going to use my uh, red or orange lines because they're a bit more pliable. And this system will be good and ready to go. It was sitting a bit tight on there up here, guys. It was, you know, it wasn't in a great spot. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and get it a bit better. So I'm going to cut similar lines but a tiny bit longer. We'll get them seated properly and uh, we'll have this system back up and running better than it was and we'll have a, a manifold that's drying up there that will be working perfectly well so we're we're nearing finishing the last few bits I wanted to do last bit I want to do as well is put the auto enrichment the choke uh, it's an auto enricher it's not actually a choke um, the other thing is uh, I've got the um, the locking mechanisms working the seat, the front locked on the key and the seat locked on the key but I'm not sure if the seat bar itself is long enough so I'll have a little look at that after let me get this bit sorted first so it's hard to show you that system but there's the top part it looks like spaghetti junction under there reds, yellows, greens it's pretty cool um, it looks messy it doesn't look standard, it doesn't look original it looks cable tied because it is um, and frankly that's the easiest way to get this done at this stage it's not bad practice there's nowhere to screw the new um, fuel pump as in the um, where it would normally go they've broken off uh, and then people used to stick them up with uh, 3M tape but that used to fall off so the cable tyres are my preferred option with that system down there oh, you can see a little bit there that's the gauge junction but that is all kind of done, dusted, up and ready. So I've got my fix up here. Now what I'm going to be doing is very gently skimming the inside of this. Just because it was a bit tight for the cob. I don't want to put too much pressure on it, especially on the fix. So I'm very gently going to be gently skimming the inside of there. And then I will be wrapping the uh, probably the electric tape if I can't find the plumber's tape. But you stretch it so that it seals. And you can go all the way up to here and then you have a fully secure, um, secure system. The other things to check is the intake here. This uh, You want to make sure it's fully sealed which this one is because sometimes they're just pushed in and they're not glued um, sometimes you buy seconds uh, you know non non OEM style ones and you push them in and they're not that sealed so you have to put glue around them but this one's fine at this stage so good we're on the right track track I need to find the old carb now and check the um, jetting compared to the uh, the upgrade one I've got on the bike, the ST one, so I can either find the original carb I took off and check the pilot jet, or I can check online. So pilot jet's here, it's a 35, it should be a 36. Um, remember the uh, original ran higher main, higher pilot, so this bike's used to that. So I need to find a 36 that I may have a new one, or I need to find the old carb and switch it over. So 35 up to 36 that should solve our in between third throttle issue and then this bike in my head this bike's done and dusted and, and will run absolutely beautifully so uh, I'm very pleased very pleased let's get this buttons back up done and dusted so we can have a quick look at Warren's as uh, he needs to be back on the road and I've got his new parts after a fair amount of carb searching and soul searching I found the right carb, the original with the 36 jet in it so we've now switched over um, everything's done now I need to plug this back on well no I need to put the uh, the uh, mount back on wrap it first make sure it's doubly secure push that back on I have skimmed the innings a little bit a little bit but not too much so uh, we're good to go let me get this piece back together I'm going to also wire up the choke system or the enrichment sit, sit, the enrichment system and um, that bike should be spot on. 
Okay, so we're buttoned back up. The rear panels aren't on yet because I want to see what's going on, but all the lines have been done. They're all run as they should. This has been sealed, glued, extra um, tape over the top for extra protection. Oh, I'm just looking at the air boxes that are seated. Yes. Um, so basically it's all done now, um, including the choke. So this bike should start, it should sound okay for a minute or two, and then it should kind of rev throughout the rev range quite comfortably. Let's have a look. At the moment it sounds similar to how it did before. First third isn't overly comfortable. We need to let it warm up, I'm gonna give it a minute and then we'll see how it goes. At the moment we're looking for fuel um, spills, coolant spills, etc. I did top up the coolant. Couple of minutes to warm up, I'll take it for a spin, I'll see if we're any better off. Oh look, the idle's gone lower, that's good, that means the hole's gone. What I will need to do is um, the uh, air fuel screw again. Good, that's good news guys, that means the hole's definitely gone, so I need to adjust the idle screw just enough once it's warm once i think the choke's off i'll then adjust the air fuel screw to its highest setting that means when the revs stop lifting you go forward another half or a quarter and you're at your optimum there so um that's all good let me get that done that's it guys the bike's very happy very very happy now um it's idling nice high on there but it's not, I think that uh, the throttle's much more responsive and I haven't even played with the air fuel screw yet which I'll be curious to do um, so I will actually I'll lower the revs a little bit more and then I'm going to see if the air fuel screw will raise the revs that's how you know if, if, if it's working or not. And I'm going to aim to get to the optimum, but this seems much smoother already. So I'm going to do the test run in a minute. Um, no, uh, no helmet cam this time because you saw a good one this morning. And uh, yeah, I'll let you guys know how this kind of bit of tuning goes. But in my head, this bike is going to be good to go. Um, one of the potential buyers is keen to come and look tomorrow uh, and they're willing to leave a deposit so it will probably be sold tomorrow uh, as always it, for me it's first come first serve three people contacted me one person's been super keen the other person's quite keen but hasn't said I'll come now the, the second person has said I'll come now and that's kind of how it works here guys um, so second guy's coming tomorrow he's gonna view the bike if he likes it he's gonna buy it but let's not get ahead of ourselves let me get this out for a test one in a minute after a tiny bit more tuning so that's it guys for the DNA the DNA is finished um, I undid the choke I wasn't sure if I wired it up the right way and I didn't want to mess it up so I've undone the choke it doesn't need it it would have to be especially cold in the UK to need the choke this is jetted beautifully, it will start and run and ride all year round. Um, don't worry about this cloth sticking out, I've put the Velcro down for the seat hold. So um, I want the, the glue to dry properly before I use it, that's all. Um, that's it, I mean I start this bike, it revs throughout the rev range. It's, it's done and dusted, it's a great bike. Don't get me wrong, it is not the best bike in the world, it's a Galera DNA, they are rubbish. Um, you know but they're kind of iconic people love them they're the only moped where you're sitting and riding as if you're on a motorbike so there's something about them that's brilliant if i ever get another one i'm going to try again with the carb i think this carb's great and works well but i'd even prefer if i could get the smaller piaggio fly carb on 
So if I ever get another DNA125, I'm going to be looking at adapting it for the smaller Piaggio fly carb for convenience. That's all. But currently, this bike runs, rides, cools, is pretty nippy, brakes, suspends, has a year's MOT, steering lock works, um, trunk lock works, uh, seat is uh, lock doesn't work. And um, that's it. it. It is a great bike. I, you know, I like it. I like its colour. I'm going to head to Halfords later, see if I can get a tiny bit of touch-up. But I think this is not a museum bike. This is a usable bike. Someone's going to be riding this. So uh, it doesn't need to look mint. And that's the truth. It just needs to be what it is, really. An iconic moped.